Hello, my name is Sean O'Neill. I am editor of Yoga Teaching Handbook and Yoga Student Handbook with Singing Dragon. So today I'm going to be offering a short, soothing and relaxing practice. So there is no question we are obviously in unprecedented and extraordinary times and many people are feeling lots of different emotions. Um, but yoga offers us uh, these tools, this kind of set of tools to help. Um, just a quick word before we start, if you have any pre-existing injuries or conditions, including pregnancy, please consult your healthcare practitioner first. Uh, and also, although this goes without saying in every class, um, perhaps particularly so for this medium, um, please, uh, with the practice, take what serves you. So if anything doesn't feel right, uh, give it a miss. We're going to be working with a mudra, a hand gesture called unshakable trust. So if you can place your fingers, top parts together, or place it in front of the heart. So this represents strength, uh, inner strength, confidence, but also a sense of something greater than us. But we'll be weaving that into the postures. So finding a comfortable seat, you might want to get, um, you might well of course not have a yoga block to hand, uh, but you might have books you could use or a cushion if you feel you would like to have some height help you stop rounding backwards. You can bring the fingertips to the side, sit nice and tall. You rest the palms on your thighs. So taking a few breaths here. Feel free to close the eyes if that is comfortable. Taking a few breaths to settle, to arrive. Softening the muscles of the face, feeling the sitting bones rounding down into the block or the floor, or the spine can lift. Gently open the eyes, inhale, shoulders up to the ears, exhale them round. We'll do that again. And again. We'll inhale the right arm up, turn the palm over, come to a nice side stretch. You can get me illuminated. Inhale and exhale. Inhale. And exhale to the other side. We'll come back towards the center. Let's inhale the arms up and overhead. Or exhale, come to a twist, bringing the right hand on the inside of the left knee, either fingertips behind, sitting nice and tall. And then exhale, easing into the twist to the left. Coming back to the center, inhale. Exhale to the other side. And we'll inhale to the center. Let's just ease at the wrist so you can interlace the hands. Gently easing the wrists one way and then the other. We're going to come onto all fours. I'll come onto my mat. So placing the hands, nice fingers, nice and spread. Hands underneath the shoulders, knees underneath the hips. We'll do some slow hip circles. So we could be big. They could be small. Coming back onto all fours, we'll inhale, dip the lower back, looking gently forward. Exhale, rounding the spine. Inhale, dipping the lower back, looking gently forward. Exhale, rounding the spine, so you're pressing the ceiling away with the spine. Feel free to gently turn the head at the end of the exhale. We'll do it again. So simple cat cow, waking up the spine. Mm -hmm. 
Next time we exhale, we'll round the spine coming towards child. So let's bring toes together. Forehead on the mat or a block. And we'll inhale, come back onto all fours with the lower back. This time we'll exhale, tuck the toes under, coming back into downward facing dog. Feel free to walk it out so you can lift one heel, lifting the other, easing into the downward dog. We'll come to a still point with the heels, so no longer pedaling it out. It's absolutely fine to have a generous bend in the knees. Maybe you shift the head side to side. Or wiggle the hips. At any point you want to break in the practice, you lower your knees onto the mat, revisit that child with the arms out in front, or perhaps with the arms by your side. So we'll come back onto all fours, tucking the toes under, lifting the hips back into downward facing dog. Nice inverted V. We'll step the feet back a little bit to inhale up onto the tiptoes, floating through to plank. That's where shoulders are over the wrists, bending the knees, come back to downward facing dog. We'll do it again. Inhale up onto the tiptoes, rippling your way forward into plank, pressing out through the heels, bending the knees back to downward facing dog. Feel free to stay here or drop the knees down, come into child, or we'll do it again. Coming through into plank, nice strong line, just gazing ahead of the mat. Exhale back to downward facing dog. Let's do a lion's breath here. So you inhale as you exhale, you stick the tongue out, looking towards the third eye. So we'll do that a couple of times. Feel free to lower the knees if you'd like a break. Otherwise, inhaling, sticking the tongue out, looking towards the third eye. So no one can see us here. Uh, feel free to go crazy. Inhale. Exhale. That's it. Coming back to breathing normally again. We'll inhale, lifting the right leg. And we'll bring the knee in towards the chest, placing the foot in between the hands so you can shuffle it along if it doesn't reach. Grab the left hand or fingertips on the floor, inhale, lifting the right arm. And coming towards a twist towards the right, lowering the top hand down, coming back to downward facing dog. We'll inhale, float the left leg up. Bringing the knee in towards the chest, placing the foot in between the hands. You can pick it up and place it there or shuffle it along. Right hand down, inhale, lifting the left arm, so opening up the lungs, opening up the chest. Gently lowering the top hand down, coming back to double facing dog. Old friend, the dog. Then we'll slowly walk the feet towards the hands. You can keep the knees nice and bent till you get to the point where you can drape the body over the legs. Good to have a big bend in the knees, feet parallel. Then you take hold of opposite arms. Gently ease out the head and neck. Maybe we go, yes, yes, yes. No, no, no. And drop the arms, change the cross of the arms. So the weight of the head is drawing the spine down, extending the spine down, increasing the spaces between the vertebrae. Then we'll draw the navel in, curl up to standing. the heads on top of the spine. Let's inhale the shoulders up. Exhale round and again. Exhale round and again. 
Exhale them. Great. Before we come into some standing postures, let's do a, a simple Qigong move. Uh, feeling and clearing, clearing and feeling. So feet about hip width apart, knees are soft, so a little bend. You inhale the arms up. As you exhale, you're drawing the fingers down in front of you, so you are clearing out anything you don't need. Inhale. And as you exhale, this time you're feeling yourself. Perhaps with a quality, a word, feeling, something that would serve you. And then inhale. Final one is to seal in that positive feeling, word, emotion that serves. And we'll lower the arms by your sides, fingers pointing down. Let's come to step the feet a little apart with the toes pointed out so it's coarse stance feet are nice and spread so they're connecting with the earth we'll inhale the arms up exhale coming to sit down on the horse so knees should be in direction of little toes perhaps we revisit that unshakable trust so we have all we need within us We'll inhale, straighten the legs, lift in the arm, exhale the hands down through to the heart, through to that unshakable trust. Inhale, straighten the legs so we can flow in and out of different times. You like water, but know that there's the, the inner strength, inner confidence inside. Inhale. Release the arms. We can keep the legs in this position and we're going to stretch the arms out into a big five point star. Lifting up through the hands, lifting through, straightening the legs. Maybe a little gentle back bend. Inhale. As you exhale, bending the knees, coming to give yourself a hug. Rounding the spine. So inhale, stretching up. So a lovely big version of you. Exhale, maybe you change the cross of the arms, giving yourself a hug. Inhale. And exhale. And we'll come to straighten the legs, release the arms. Place the right foot forward. Step the feet out, about three and a half feet apart. We're going to come to warrior two stance. So right foot is forward, parallel with the edge of the mat, back foot turned in. We'll inhale the arms to parallel, exhale slowly, bend the front knee. So both legs are nice and strong. We're not leaning forwards or back. It's like you're in between both legs. Gently gazing over the middle fingers. We'll inhale, straighten the front leg, lift the arm. Exhale, softly float back into warrior two. This time we'll inhale, straighten the legs, cross the arm. Exhale back. We'll do that a couple of times. So inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. One more time. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, exhale. We'll bring the back hand down, turn the front palm over, come to reverse warrior. Then we'll bring the front elbow onto the front thigh, coming to Paj Bakonasana. We can keep the back hand down to open the torso, open the shoulder first. Then we can float the top arm up, and if you feel stable, bringing it up and overhead, but still turning the torso towards the ceiling. Then we'll inhale back and exhale into warrior two. Inhaling to the center, all 10 toes facing forward. And you can either turn 
towards the back, so you're not facing me anymore, left foot is facing forward, or you can swap legs with the left foot at the front of the mat. So warrior two on the other side, back foot turned in, front foot facing forward, hips roughly facing me, inhale, exhale back into warrior two. So both legs nice and strong, shoulders relax. We'll inhale, straighten the front leg, lift the arms, exhale back into warrior two. Inhale, straighten the front leg, cross the arm, exhale back. We'll do it a couple of times more. Inhale, floating the arms up, looking towards the hands, exhale back into warrior two. Inhale, and exhale. Uh, we'll inhale, straighten the front leg and have all 10 toes facing forward. Um, for wide leg forward bend. So it might be that um, it, the feet feel a little bit pigeon toed or the heels are um, a bit further out than the toes to get the feet parallel. So we'll have the hands on the hips lifting up through the torso and we'll exhale, hinging at the hips, coming to forward fold. Let's come to a kind of quadruped position, fine to bend the knees, where the fingers are out in front. We'll inhale, lengthen along the spine here. Exhale, walk the fingers back. And let the uh, spine release down. So it might be that the hands are on a bunch of books, raised height, letting the hair just slowly extend down. Doesn't matter how far the head comes or not. The main thing is that we are stretching the insides of the legs, the back of the legs, and extending, releasing the spine down. We'll walk the fingertips onto the hips, bending the knees, inhale, slowly coming up to standing. Let's heel toe the feet together. And come to face me. We're going to be coming into a tree, rickshasana pose. So we'll ground down with the right foot. So you might want to spread the foot out a little bit. And we can place the opposite heel here, resting on the foot, or maybe you bring it onto the shin or the thigh doesn't really matter where, fine to have a hand against a wall. And we can keep the hands here, maybe back in that unshakable trust, or lifting the arms, maybe you move the branches and the leaves. So strengthening the standing leg, foot, ankle, lifting up, we can still have a lightness in the torso. And then we'll bring the lifted knee up towards you and slowly, slowly place it down. Coming to balance on the other side. So grounding down with the opposite foot. We can start and stay here. That's totally fine. Or we can come to place the foot anywhere that feels comfortable for you. This knee going out to the side as far as it's comfortable also using where you'd like your arms. So one thing with balance is it's pretty hard to worry, isn't it, when you're in one, so they are good for clearing the mind also. And we'll slowly release the arms, hug this knee in towards you, and slowly, slowly place it down with control, and we'll shake everything out. We're going to come down towards uh, the mat now, also via a gentle balance. So feet hip width apart, knees a little bit soft bent, that is bent. So we'll inhale, float the arms up. As you exhale, just as though you were painting a screen with the fingers. So inhale. Just 
and as you inhale, maybe you lift the toes, and as you exhale, sorry, you lift the heels, and as you exhale, lifting the toes. So inhale, lifting the arms, lifting the heels, exhale, lowering the heels, lifting the toes. We'll do that a couple more times. Inhale, exhale. time as we come up but as long as the knees are happy we're going to come down towards the floor with the heels raised so nice and slowly full control to come down towards the mat so we'll come down to sitting feel free to sit on a block if you find yourself rolling backwards and that will stop us from bending from this the uh back rather than from the hips. We're going to come into Janu Shishasana. So with the right leg stretched out in front, toes pointing up, knees pointing towards the ceiling, we'll bring the left knee out to the side, foot against the right thigh. Start off with a twist. So we'll have the right hand on the left knee, hug the fingertips behind. Inhale, sitting tall, exhaling towards the left. Then we'll come back to the center Place the whole body over the outstretched leg. Inhale here. Exhale, come into a forward fold. You might find that the hands are closer towards you so that you're focusing on extending the spine upwards rather than rounding the spine. Take a nice smooth breath in. A smooth breath out. We'll bring uh, fingers underneath the bent knee, stretching both legs out in front. And we'll get the, give the knees a jiggle. We're getting half of the illuminator now with the evening sun coming through. Then the same thing on the other side, stretching out the left leg, toes pointing towards the ceiling and the knee. We'll bring the bending of the right knee in, placing the foot against the edge of the left side, bringing the right finger to hips behind, left hand onto the right knee, sitting nice and tall, exhale, easing towards the right. And we'll inhale back to the centre, and we'll, as you exhale, hinging in the hips, coming to forward fold over the outstretched leg, so maybe we try not to grasp for the foot, but concentrate on prioritizing length in the spine. We'll inhale back, coming back to sitting, taking the hand underneath the bent knee, stretching both legs and kicking the jiggle. Then we'll place the soles of the feet on the mat and we're going to come down to lying down on the back. Now shuffle the feet a bit further away from you and as wide as the mat. We'll have the arms out to the sides. We'll inhale here. As you exhale, let both knees flop over to the left. Inhale to the center. And exhale, flop over to the right. So simple windscreen wiper legs. Inhaling to the center. Maybe as you exhale, you turn the head the opposite way. Inhale back to the center. Let's draw one knee in towards you, then the other. Give yourself a gentle hug. Maybe you do some small circles, knees together, or backwards and forwards, releasing the back into the mat. Then we'll place the soles of the feet onto the mat. We're going to come into a modified bridge. So that's where you press into the feet to lift the hips, place the arms underneath the hips, and then we have the soles of the feet together, Baddha legs. So making yourself comfortable, 
this should give you a little lift in the heart. Breathing into the open lungs, breathing into the open chest. If the legs feel uncomfortable at any time, you can draw them together. And gently bringing the knees together, lifting the hips, letting the back settle onto the mat. And you can keep the feet here, or you can stretch out the legs for a final relaxation, Shavasana. So either the feet on the mat or legs stretched out, arms by the sides, palms facing up, or maybe hand fingers resting, hands resting on the belly. So choosing where you will be comfortable for a couple of minutes. Resting in Shavasana. I'm going to read you a poem. Hope is the thing with feathers by Emily Dickinson. Hope is the thing with feathers that perches in the soul and sings the tune without the words and never stops at all. And sweetest in the gale is heard, and sore must be the storm that could abash the little bird that kept so many warm. I've heard it in the chillest land and on the strangest sea, yet never in extremity it asked a crumb. Resting for a few moments more in Shavasana, and then I'll come and bring you back. your breath deep and slightly. Gently easing back into the body, maybe we start to make some small movements with the fingers, toes, maybe do some wrist rotations, ankle rotations. Feel free to give yourself a big stretch. Then easing over onto one side, and making your way up to sitting, finding comfortable seats again with a nice tall spine. Just inhale the arms up and overhead. Exhale the hands. So the thumbs are resting on the heart. We turn the head to meet the hands, let the hands drop into the lap. Gently open the eyes. And namaste. Know that although we may be physically apart, we are not alone. Thank you.